things more confusing. In order to convert- <laughs> What? It's time for some more Styropyro. Specifically, zero volt energy. Looking at a golden penny here. Specifically, this chemistry experiment is more cursed than it looks. Zero volt energy with a golden penny. I think I know what he's getting at, but let's see. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Tyler Fulce. I'm a nuclear engineer with a little over 10 years of experience in the commercial nuclear power industry. From engineering to operations to emergency response. I don't think to know everything there is nuclear, but I can certainly share some knowledge. Let's see. Right here I have some pennies that I turned into silver and gold. Ah, using a zinc reaction. Pretty sure. I don't think he's talking about alchemy with uh, copper and gold. Though if that was the case, he'd be talking about proton number changes at the atomic level which would involve mega electron volt scale energies and gamma emissions, if you would bother doing something like that. I did it using one of the coolest chemistry demos I know of. Okay. No, they aren't. He mentioned chemistry, not nuclear physics, so <laughs> it's got to be the zinc thing. Actually gold, but the experiment is magic in more ways than meet the eye. So something on the electron volt energy scale as opposed to the mega electron volt energy scale per atom. In fact, I don't think I've ever seen a chemistry demo that seems to just so blatantly violate the laws of physics. <laughs> there are a few very- Seemingly, not actually. After all, the laws of thermodynamics are extremely hard to violate. It's one of those things when you're running an experiment, if something looks like it's doing so, the correct assumption is you haven't accounted for all the reservoirs of energy or entropy, which is something that couple of gentlemen by the names of Pons and Fleischmann probably should have looked at when they were doing cold fusion experiments. If you want to hear a deep dive on that, check out the pinned comment below. But yes, anything in nuclear engineering doesn't work because the physics is loose. It's actually quite strict, and that's something you just have to deal with. Creations of this penny alchemy experiment, but they all give the same alchemy. result. I like to place pennies in a tray of water, and then toss in some lime yep. zinc metal dust. The pennies begin changing color not long after adding the chemicals, and after a while they're completely covered in a silvery coating. Now this is cool by itself, but sticking the pennies in a flame gives an even more impressive result. They turn to this incredible gold color. Nice. The gold appearance is really just due to the brass alloy made in the flame, but even so, I certainly feel like an alchemist when doing it. Now this experiment has been popular among chemistry teachers for decades, but all the write-ups on it seem to gloss over. Yes, I vaguely remember seeing some variant of this way back in high school. For how incredibly cursed it is. <laughs> so the first part of the reaction is nothing crazy. That involves alchemy, Zinc reacts allegedly. with hydroxide in the presence of water to form the zincate ion, along with some hydrogen gas. So this is kind of like dissolving nuclear fuel in a solution. You've increased the chemical availability, not creating energy at this point. So as far as first law of thermodynamics is concerned, we're good. Good luck breaking that one. So how does this end up plating the copper? Well, this is where things get sticky. You might think that the copper simply replaces the dissolved zinc, but that doesn't make sense because zinc's the more reactive metal here. Yeah. Yes, the whole electrochemical series is not optional. It's by fundamental binding energies of electrons, which again are on the electron volt scale as opposed to the millions of electron volts that you have in the actual nuclei. But yeah, if copper could spontaneously displace zinc. This is easy to see by tossing galvanized nails in a copper sulfate solution. Yep. The zinc plating dissolves and the copper crashes out, and that's because zinc is more reactive than copper. Now if you try the reverse reaction, sticking copper metal in a zinc sulfate solution, nothing happens. Well, not unless you apply a voltage to it. Yes, and now we're bringing up the second law of thermodynamics. That, yes, you have to put work on the system. In this case, electrochemical work. Oh yeah, a voltage. Maybe there's a battery being formed here somewhere. <laughs> I mean, zinc does make good batteries, Imagine right? that. Well, there is, but it only makes things more confusing. In order to convert- <laughs> What? <laughs> so yes, it's not- Perpetual energy or some sort of low energy nuclear reaction, which is the colloquial term for nuclear, for cold fusion. I'm sure those guys had to have done something like this before, though. The zincate made in the first part of the reaction back into zinc metal. Something has to drive electrons into it. So mm -hmm. what's doing that? We've already ruled out copper, and it can't be the lie either because that's what was used to dissolve zinc in the first place. The only thing left is the zinc metal itself. Yep. Now that may sound like some free energy nonsense, but check this out. Thank you for saying that whole free energy stuff is nonsense. I've made three little plating setups here using chunks of zinc instead of powder. 
It turns out the penny Something. will only get plated if it's either touching zinc metal or if it's electrically connected to zinc via a wire. There you have it. So zinc is the anode, copper is the cathode, and that's a galvanic cell. Submersing it in the zincate solution alone won't cut it. So yeah, it is the zinc driving the reaction, and yeah, this is extremely cursed. If you try to write out the full reaction for the... <laughs> what even is... This? No, this image right here is cursed. ...battery that's being formed here. Everything cancels out because the products and the reactants are the same. Somehow, we've made a zero-volt battery that's capable of electroplating. Or a misidentified voltage reference. This is kind of like when you see zero net reactivity when fissions are still happening. All that means is you're at steady state, or critical. That's what critical really means, by the way. Because voltage is a difference between two states. It's also why it's referred to as electrical potential. Well, zero volts in theory. In practice, the setup actually produces a significant <laughs> voltage. This <laughs> the only time I'll ever call one volt significant. I mean, you're dealing on a microscopic scale here, and of course, Styropyro, yeah, I can, he deals with, you know, crazy experiments involving the magnetrons of microwaves to get high voltage, so, yeah. <laughs> this implies that a loop of turning zinc back into itself produces a net release of energy, aka free energy. It's yeah, but you're leaving the heat out of it, though. That's a bit like claiming free energy in nuclear fuel, because fuel rods get hotter, while ignoring things like you got neutrons leaking and decay heat. It's energy from nothing! Hand to top it off! I know he's being theatrical with it, I know he doesn't actually believe this, he's... but it is funny to kind of see this. In fact, I wish I had him teach chemistry, thermodynamics, when I was in high school. Off. The starting material is this mess of powder, and it's being converted into what appears to be a highly ordered sheet of metal on the penny. It seems we're breaking the laws of ther what appears to be thermodynamics like a checklist at this point. <laughs> oh, this is funny. So thermodynamics doesn't care what it looks like if it is more ordered or not. Total entropy still went up, and free energy still went down. I mean, whether or not it looks more ordered because it's a nice shiny penny or whatever that <laughs> doesn't really apply. So the ordered sheets look more ordered, but the whole system got more disordered because heat was released and there was increased disorder at the atomic scale. Just like in nuclear fuel, when it gets used up, you got all those fission fragments in there, the waste product, <laughs> way less ordered. So apparently this uh, silly educational demo also functions as an over unity battery which would actually be really convenient for the human race, you know, considering the whole energy crisis or whatever. But before giving me millions of dollars in the Nobel Prize, we should- How about take a million dollars worth of these gold pennies? We should probably take a closer look at what's going on here. After a there bunch of searching, I found a great paper on the topic that addresses way more points than I go through here. Okay, It turns yeah. out these silvery pennies are not plated in pure zinc. They're actually plated in a form of brass with high zinc content. Yes, but- Again, we're talking copper zinc, yes, and the copper zinc alloy formation releases heat and increases entropy. And as far as free energy, it removes Gibbs free energy. So why is this important? The sheer act of mixing zinc and copper actually releases- Well, it shows that you're not getting free energy. <laughs> and you can- and, in, and again, a way at doing this experiment is a fun way to debunk some of those outrange- some of the more outrageous cold fusion claims. Heat is heat, and it also makes a more disordered product. So there is a free energy here. A negative Gibbs free energy for- Yes, <laughs> exactly. And the term Gibbs free energy is a bit misleading. Yeah, in this case, the term free energy is a bit misleading. The process, which means that thermodynamics is obeyed after all. But wait. He sounds so disappointed. Don't you have to melt the metals for them to mix? Nope. Not necessarily. I mean, that's one way to do it. The zinc actually migrates into the copper during the plating process. Diffusion. This brass has a high fraction of zinc, which is why it looks silvery. But heating it in a flame allows the zinc to migrate deeper and mix more thoroughly with the copper. Pretty cool, right? That was satisfying to watch, that bit at the end. But yes, all about hiding energy and chemical potential. No violation of thermodynamics. No positive free energy. <laughs> this was a good one. Thanks so much for the recommendation, and thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time.